The year is 1990. Lance Barr designs this. Now this is the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. From all accounts, uh, from what my memory is telling me, this is the first gaming experience I remember having in my life. And my mind was blown. Now at this point in time it is kind of important to note that I quite literally do not exist yet. Um, but some way or another, one of these ended up in my hands, and I ended up growing up with one of these. And oh my god, I couldn't have been any happier. This thing put me on my gaming path. And by that, I mean it... ...ruined my social life. But anyway, today we're going to be looking at some games I played from my childhood, and I'm going to be ranking them on a tier list. And, uh, yeah, let's get right into it. One thing before we start, though, uh, I just wanted to say that I am maybe kind of probably going to say some stuff that you aren't going to agree with. And when I do say that stuff, uh, please refrain from coming to my house and blowing up everything. <laughs> Goof Troop for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. This is the first game I think I have ever played, and oh my god, the soundtrack it's okay. You had some really cool power-ups. I remember there was this 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 hook shot like thing, but it was like not as cool as the hook shot, but it was still a thing that you could use. And uh, you know, I'm not even gonna lie, this game is C tier. Let's move on. Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Oh man, this is the first good game I remember playing and actually enjoying. Now, this game is the first introduction of Yoshi. This is the first game we ever saw this, this, this thing. Is the, fir this, the first time we've ever seen him uh, in the video game era and on screen. So, it's uh, amazing in that sense but the soundtrack to this game is beautiful it's got the traditional bowser boss at the end that every single mario game has but i mean come on what mario game doesn't have a bowser boss at the end the thing that makes super mario world so unique to me is the fact that there were these little points called star zones and at these points you could go in and it was like a little area that just transported you all around the world and it was full of like secrets and you could there was just always secrets being found in this game and you could do glitches and cheats and it's there's still so much about this game i bet that hasn't even been found out yet and i will forever love this game s tier s s, -S tier s s tier s super mario world 2 yoshi's island fuck this game f tier young merlin for the super nintendo entertainment system now this, I think, is the most obscure game I can remember playing as a child, because who the hell just grows up and says, yo, you wanna hop on some Young Merlin later, bro? What the fuck is Young Merlin? Now from what I can remember, this game was actually decently fun. It had a somewhat decent soundtrack as well, but it definitely wasn't my favorite game of all time to play on the Super Nintendo. Uh, but as for now, I'm going to give it a C tier we can move on cool spot for the super nintendo entertainment system you probably don't know what this game is but this game is an advertisement for seven up i swear to fucking god this entire game is an advertisement for seven up i am not kidding you and it is genuinely an amazing game i don't know how they did it it had a beautiful soundtrack it had a beautiful mascot that you could play as. I mean, just look at him. Tell me this is not the most lovable guy. The way they designed it, it felt extremely flowy with the original Super Nintendo controls. Um, now, these were the first iterations of bumpers on Nintendo controllers. That's pretty cool. And uh, this is the controller I grew up playing on. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, anyway, cool spot, awesome game, 7-Up, really good on you for making an actually good game that wasn't complete bullshit. Uh, yeah, A tier. Star Fox for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Yeah, it's it's got some goofy controls. Star Fox started a really good series, and I'll say that. Star Fox has got to be one of the most integral Nintendo properties 
that they've accumulated over the years. This game had some goofy controls. It had secret levels that I really hated trying to find because it took forever. And uh, I never beat this game. But it set up a really good genre of games. So, you know, just for that, we'll give it a B tier and we'll move on. Spider-Man 2 for the Xbox. Now, this one's in the thumbnail, so this might have been one of the reasons you've clicked on this video. So, uh, don't worry, I will not disappoint you. This game is a solid S tier, but let me explain why this game is a solid S tier, okay? This man right here, Jamie Fristrom, he built the web swinging mechanics for every Spider Man game with his bare hands. This man is a living legend, and we should all respect him. Apart from that, though, the side missions were insanely fun. Besides the little balloon kid, that was that was annoying. Having to get his balloons all the damn time. Mysterio was one of my favorite villains in a video game ever. I love the fact that in the final confrontation with him, he's building up his health bars. His health bar charges up one time, two times, three times. He's the strongest boss you've ever fought in this game. And you go in and you take one swing and he falls down and he's just the worst video game boss ever. And he goes down in one hit. And that's the point. He's a master of illusion. He makes you think he is a super strong, insane, badass boss. But you go in, you throw one punch and he goes down immediately. And that's his illusion. I love this game. S tier. Lego Batman for the Xbox. This is the only Lego game I'm putting on this list because this is the only Lego game that deserves to be on this list. Uh, this game is an A tier. It's nostalgic and, uh, you know, I can't say much else. It's a Lego game. Let's move on. Outlaw Golf 2 for the Xbox. I don't remember much from this game. I'm going to be completely honest. Other than you were playing golf with half-dressed people most of the time. I don't remember exactly how this game ended up in poor, innocent child me's hands, but, uh, you know, this game sucks, and I'm gonna give it a D tier, where we can put it here and we can move on. Superman Returns for the Xbox. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I was, um, originally gonna do a lot more research on this, on this one, but now, uh, after doing a little bit of research on it, I want to do a full video on this specific topic. So, wait, and I will do a full video on Superman Returns for the Xbox. Um, I'd really liked that the Bizarro was in this game. He was really cool. The flying mechanics were absolute ass. Uh, C tier. Batman Begins for the Xbox. Okay. Now, not a lot of people have played this game, but this is the christian bale batman movie tie-in game i love this game okay this game is everything to me let me tell you when you put scarecrow in a batman game and you give him the full writing potential that he deserves he can be a scary fucking villain look at this look at this do you see this what the fuck this game genuinely had one of the best stories. I loved the soundtrack to this game. It just had like the regular Christian Bale Batman soundtrack to it, which, I mean, it's the Batman soundtrack. It never gets old. It's Batman. Mechanics were awesome. This was my kind of first introduction to stealth games as a child, and I will dive deeper on that because Batman has a huge role uh, in stealth games in my childhood, but we'll, we'll, we'll dive deeper into that. Just, just you wait. Hulk for the Xbox. Now, uh, I'm not talking about the semi-good Hulk game. I'm sorry, not this one. I'm sorry, this one was okay. I'm talking about this fucking monstrosity. The graphics in this game were horrifying i don't understand it was like they were trying to go for comic graphics and then gave up halfway through and like tried to throw super mario galaxy at it and it just didn't work look at this guy he's like a weird little alien bug dude i don't know what he's i don't remember why he's here but he's here you know uh you'd get to stealth around on alcatraz as bruce banner for some reason because that's something you need to do in a Hulk game. D tier. D tier. D, D tier. Getting up for the Xbox. I'm not gonna 
dive too deep on this game. This game is a D tier. It it's a spray painting game, you know. You go around, you tag stuff, you spray paint stuff, you get like bolt cutters and you cut stuff. And it had kind of a lame storyline. This game was just kind of lame. I you know, it was fun for child me because the graphics were kind of cool. D tier, we can move on. Matrix: The Path of Neo for the Xbox. Oh my god, do you understand? If you have never played a movie tie-in game, I apologize. Not all of them are good, and I'll say that, I'll say that. Not all movie tie-in games are good, but this one. Oh, but this one. There was this awesome intro sequence where it was Morpheus, he was like, take the red pill, and you can go and, you know, and or or you could take the blue pill, and you can wake up and end the game early, and have, have the secret ending to the game, because you chose the blue pill, and there was like these underground stealth combat missions where, you know, you had to run around and like, punch and fight guys, and, you know, it's just, you know, this game, A tier, A tier game, I love this game. I love, I love this. GTA San Andreas for the Xbox. This is the first ever Grand Theft Auto game I can remember playing, and I love this game, okay? It had an amazing cast, CJ, smoke, oh, get on the train, oh, CJ, get, get train, on the train! CJ. This game is beautiful in every way possible, okay? But, I'm gonna give it, and don't get mad at me here, okay? No nuclear devices. We made that clear in the intro. Okay, calm down. A tier. Don't hurt me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This game had amazing opportunity for cheats. You could go around just shooting people and like driving cars and crashing cars and exploding things and that's mainly what I played the game for. Yeah, like who the hell remembers playing this game for the story? I don't remember what the story was about. I remember this guy and he said shit skis, you know, and that's what I remember mainly from this game. This game was one of the pioneers for cheat codes, all right, and this is one of the best cheat code games ever. And if I say cheat code too many times, it'll probably piss you off. So I'm going to say it again. Cheat code. Spider-Man 3 movie tie-in game for the Wii. Oh man, okay. Now, before we start this, I just want to say I'm a fan of Spider-Man, okay? I like Spider-Man. I like... Sp look, okay, why, look, look. You want me to prove it to you? Look. See? I like Spider-Man. I He's, look, He's he's right there. He's, he is right there. I like Spider-Man. I, I, I promise. This game had cool symbiote mechanics. Okay, I'll say that. You could switch the symbiote on and off on the fly, but when you took the symbiote off, you had to do some button mashing to take it off fully. And uh, the more you use the symbiote, the more button mashing you had to do to pull it all the way off because... Uh, that's how it works. They actually did get Tobey Maguire to voice Spider-Man in this game somehow. He's not meant to be a voice actor. He's just, just listen, just listen. I'm sorry for missing class. I was on my way. But He's very tired. Now this game had an insanely fun end boss, Venom as an end boss. This was an insanely difficult boss, I'll say that. But that was what made it so fun, in my opinion. It had so much of a challenge that when I finally beat it, I was able to put this game away and never touch it again. C tier. Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2. Now, normally I would just do these two separately, but I don't want to waste all of your time. So uh, I'm going to rank them together and they're both S tier. I mean, come on. Super Mario Galaxy 1, amazing. Amazing controls. You could shake the remote. There was awesome power-ups. Rosalina was there, and oh my god, Rosalina! The level design was beautiful in every way possible, and I mean that. In Super Mario Galaxy 2, it's only better because they add fucking Yoshi to the mix, and Yoshi is always fucking goaded. Super Mario 64. I know we're kind of going backwards. We were just at the Wii, and now we're back at the N64. Haha, ha, there's only two games I played on the N64, okay? I didn't play Super Mario Sunshine. 
I'm sorry. Super Mario 64 for the Nintendo 64 was, you know, this was a game. And I liked this game. This was a Mario game. Uh, the final boss with Bowser was awesome. The graphics, amazing. This one is mainly carried by nostalgia, but uh, whatever. We'll give it B tier. You, you can, it can have B tier. It'll take B tier. The Jorah's Mask for the Nintendo 64. Now, on the other hand, I thought, oh, the Nintendo 64 can probably only be so limited. There can only probably be such a good game on the Nintendo 64. I was wrong. I was so, so wrong. Majora's Mask for the Nintendo 64 is an S-tier video game, but let me tell you why. Alright, it doesn't have to be played on the Nintendo 64. You can emulate this game for whatever the fuck you have and play it right now. Okay, fuck Nintendo. They don't want you to do it, but you can. Okay, they're gonna send their Nintendo ninjas after you, but you play that game and you enjoy it. This game, I'm pretty sure, takes place, like, right before or after Ocarina of Time. I don't quite know the time frame. It's fucking weird, though. Like, look at this. Link, like, turns into whatever the hell this snot goblin thing is. And then he can blow bubbles out of his nose. And then he puts on other masks and he turns it. Like, look at this. is horrifying. Look at him. He's peeling his face off. That's not normal. But that is why it was so cool for me as a kid. Because you didn't get to see people peeling their faces off all the time. Now something about this game that you may not believe. This game took me three years to beat. Okay? Three whole years. This game was insane. You had to go to all four temples and collect the songs, and you had to get every single mask for the super secret boss battle, and if you got all the masks, you got the super secret mask that you could put on, and it turned you into a literal fucking god. Like, what? I want this! Yes, this is an S-tier game, objectively, and if you have anything else to say, you can fight me. I will fucking die on this hill. Batman Arkham Asylum for the PlayStation 3. This is how you do a fucking game. Th this, this is Batman, okay? This is my Batman. You may see other Batmans and be like, oh yeah, those are Batman. This is my Batman, okay? This is Kevin Conroy. Batman Arkham Asylum was... An amazing game. It had an amazing storyline. It was so linear. The free flow combat made everything feel so insane. And it, it, it the free flow combat, like does was the combat system for every single game after Batman Arkham Asylum came out, and it changed combat in video games as we know it. This game can take an A tier. I love this game. I love this game. Batman Arkham City for the PS3. This game is just Arkham Asylum, but better, okay? You got more mechanics, you got more gadgets, you got way more stuff, you got more enemies, more bosses, you got Mr. Freeze. He's fucking so cool in this game. Look at Mr. Freeze. Look at him. Ah! This game had some of the funnest boss battles in any game that I think I can name to this day. Like, the Ra's al Ghul boss battle was so fun. The Clayface boss battle is unforgettable. Batman with a sword doing fucking ninja flips and shit, waving that shit around. You have no clue what fun is unless you've played the Batman Arkham games. This game is a certified A-tier game. Batman Arkham Knight came out in 2015, so I don't really clarify that as my childhood, but yeah, that's, that's S-tier. Portal 2. This is the final game I played on the PS3 in what I would consider my childhood. This game was amazing. This game was beautiful. It had storytelling. I am going to completely admit it right now. I didn't play Portal 1 before I played Portal 2. I know that's what you're supposed to do. I didn't. GLaDOS is one of the best video game villains of all time. The graphics still hold up to this day. Look at this. This could 
be on the PS4. You have no idea the soundtrack in this game. Oh my god. God, have you ever gotten chills up your spine by just listening to the environment around you creaking and buzzing at you? Just listen to this! Listen, right here! This is a specific special audio clip that only plays, it's a 15 second duration, and it only plays when your character, your, whose name is Shell, by the way, they never clarify that in any of the two games, but anyway, her name is Shell, and when she is going through super fast and she's gaining momentum and going, you know, flying through the air, this, this music plays in the background to accompany the momentum. And it is just, it fits. And everything in this game just fits. And the boss battle is amazing being betrayed by a friend you once loved. And oh my god. And if I just spoiled Portal 2 for you, I'm not sorry. It's been fucking 13 years. Play the game. This game is obligatorily an S tier. I would put it higher if I could, but, uh, you know, it's an S tier for sure. Well, uh, this is the ending segment of the video. This part's completely unscripted. I don't know what I'm doing. So uh, I just wanted to say thanks to you guys. Thank you for helping me uh, do all of this with my videos, helping me get this set up and making the videos that I actually want to make. And this is so fun and I love making these style of videos and uh, if you like seeing them hit the like button comment subscribe let me know what you think feedback is valuable but uh yeah that's that's pretty much all I have for you guys today uh thank you so much for watching if you stuck through the whole way if you're still watching right now comment banana butter uh ball sacks don't comment that please if you had any games you remember playing as a child, go ahead and put them in the comments, and uh, maybe we could have a little conversation about games we played as kids. That's about it for today, and uh, I'll see you guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>